everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe. This is going to be a very rewarding one for a lot of folks because I get a lot of questions in the community. How do we get started with open source? How do we get into DevOps? What are some of the nice communities to be a part of? And things like that. So uh, today we have an amazing you know, uh, line of uh, speakers and guests over here, Prithvi and Nilanjan. We're going to talk about chaos engineering, how you can get started. And we'll also touch upon how you can get uh, you know, involved as a contributor in this amazing open source project like Miss Chaos, which we'll talk more about later. So yeah, if you want to get started with open source, you can get started in, you know, with Chaos Engineering, this session is for you. Also, if you don't know anything about Chaos Engineering, this session is for you. Uh, before we move forward, uh, Prithvi, would you like to give yourself an intro and then we can go, uh, then Nilanjan, you can give your intro. Sure, absolutely. Thanks a lot, uh, Kunal, once again for organizing this. And uh, my name is uh, Prithvi Raj. I'm working as a technical community manager at Harness, and I've been leading the community for the Litmus Chaos CNCF incubating project since the last two and a half years. And other than that, I've also been organizing a few events around the India circuit as well as uh, globally. So we have organized Kubernetes Community Days, Bangalore, Chennai, and then Chaos Carnival as, as a global chaos engineering event. And also we organize chaos engineering meetups every month on the last Saturdays. So that's a quick intro about me and Nilanjan, you, you can go ahead. Thank you so much, Prithvi. So yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for joining in. This is Nilanjan. So I'm a software engineer at Harness and uh, for the past one year, I have been a core contributor to the Litmus Chaos project. The basic thing that I do for Litmus Chaos is developing new chaos experiments. I analyze the environments or basically the situations around which chaos experiments can be built and then i suitably break things in production you can say so yeah that's a very brief intro to me and yeah i've been also been an active speaker in many kcds many meetups so yeah always here to catch up with you guys thanks amazing and i leave the links to twitter uh, of you know both the speakers in the description below you can make sure you know give them a follow and see the amazing work they do which is nice because folks often ask me what are some of the nice meetups happening in india so here you go you know all right cool uh let's get started with you know for folks who may not be familiar with the term why are we talking about chaos you know uh, what does it mean by chaos and what is chaos engineering and wh why is it that because why is it is why is it getting so much attention right now in in at kubecon also there was a nice little discussion around it and so many folks joined in so what's what's happening why are we doing this so so kunal uh, chaos engineering i mean it it was a term which was coined by netflix once again and um, i mean it it wasn't popular back then i think but but if you talk about this term itself it it gave a lot of confidence to people around the Netflix engineering team itself. So, so and, and you know, there were so many testing methodologies already present. I mean, people were focused on performance testing and integration testing and all these things, but, but no one was actually worried about how, how, how can, you know, things be affected when, when they go into production or, or what are the possible outages that are happening in the real world and, and why uh, scale is in, scaling is important because you see today, uh, you know, scaling is is something which has become really important today. Uh, I mean, and and there there's a possibility of an outage every other day. I mean, the systems can go down any time in production itself. And with with things being dynamic itself, you, I'll, I'll just talk about Kubernetes because we we have been closely related to the CNCF ecosystem. Kubernetes itself is is dynamic in nature and, and it's it's developing every day and and Kubernetes applications are are pretty dynamic. There are enhancements and features coming up every day, every other day. The application requires some amount of you know resiliency or reliability and and to make systems reliable, you you need to have that testing suit in place, which which you know which can build con help you build confidence. And that is where chaos engineering came into play, where you are already inducing such sort of a chaotic condition that can happen in reality. And, and that that is how the, the term chaos engineering was coined exactly, where Netflix started off with, with chaos monkey. We'll, we'll move on to that when we talk about open source projects, where the initial goal was to randomly terminate instances, just terminate instances which are in production. And... To, to just find out what will happen if this happens in a real life scenario. 
so chaos engineering was nothing but inducing a fault deliberately into your system let's say if you talk about kubernetes then let's say a pod delete you induce a pod delete or, or a pod cpu kill or something of that sort deliberately into your system to identify what can happen if the system goes down in reality what can happen if such sort of faults happen in the real world scenarios when your system is actually in production and and that is why chaos engineering became a popular term because you know that just added more confidence you were breaking things on purpose to not actually break them but to build them to bring confidence in your systems to make you self feel confident and in in today's world if i take examples we are living in india and you know there are these sales happening i mean there's a big billion day sale or there's an amazon great india festival which happens during the festivals and you know during the peak hours there's there's requirement for scaling there's there's a there's always a possibility of, of an outage or let's say there's a popular tv series that comes out on netflix or amazon prime and and at one point of time let's say at 12 am everyone is actually at it everyone wants to just watch it at once and that is where scaling is very important there is a possibility of an outage everywhere and that is why if you talk about such huge giants not just netflix if you talk about prime video if you talk about hbo if you talk about disney plus these folks are actually focusing on on bringing such practices chaos engineering as a practice which we used to think was you know somewhere around early majority or early adoption has actually reached a stage where it's it's into i mean some sort of majority today everyone is seeing uh, at uh, seeing chaos engineering as a practice that they must adopt so that will be a quick intro i mean to to chaos engineering and yeah. it's like it's not something that that is like so making you know uh, preparing for the future by running the disaster scenarios people have been doing this in the industry for years and years um and and when we talk about you mentioned uh, kids being dynamic right when we talk about the microservices based architecture and stuff you may not know what a what a stable state looks like you know and it, it, it some of the vulnerabilities that are there you know they cannot be detected by your conventional methods in in, in devops and i believe that's where chaos engineering uh, comes in uh, nilanjan would you like to add on to it Yeah, absolutely. I mean, chaos engineering as a discipline has come very far from its Netflix days. It's being adopted by giants, of course, and as we progressively move to a world where Kubernetes is becoming a norm, where distributed systems are becoming norm, it's very much evident that all the complexity that we are adding at such a pace, because right now softwares and all these organizations are moving at the pace of hours and minutes to bring in the required changes to deliver the best software to their users. So, of course, there is a huge probability. of something going wrong and as the murphy's law states anything that can go wrong will go wrong it's only a matter of when not if so yeah in that regard chaos engineering is a life saver that i guess everyone has to embrace and adopt eventually if not today that's what my thinking is amazing one quick question i have it before i forget it uh, we were talking about chaos engineering uh, for someone who may be new to the term you know i think the definition made it pretty clear are there any like similarities between this and uh, resili- resilience engineering so when we talk about being prepared for you know uh, like like when a disaster happens you recover from it quickly and stuff is it sort of like that or are there any differences between chaos and resilience absolutely so when we speak about resilience engineering we can state it as a part of a chaos engineering but chaos engineering as a practice in itself is much larger than that let me quote you an example while we talk about resilience engineering we are having this application that we want to make sure that it's resilient it's ready for our deployment and everything is correct before it actually goes into production we can definitely ensure that with chaos engineering and we can optimize the parts of it which can be improved for the resilience however the goal of chaos engineering at large is also to discover the aspects of our pro, uh, of our system which make it critical it is more about understanding our system and its behavior when we are subjugating it to a state which it is not really comfortable within for example we are introducing a huge amount of traffic or we are introducing some amount of network chaos latency stuff like that so observability as they say is a very large 
pillar of chaos engineering and without that we are actually in the dark and we don't understand what we are doing to our system so it's actually only chaos not engineering without observability that's my i see so it. so that the 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 subset part you mentioned we can basically then say that it's that so chaos engineering is basically a way to achieve resilience precisely cool. All right, cool. Uh, so we talked about what it is, why we are doing it. Um, can you uh, share a little bit more about this journey about uh, when we talk about the open source tools when it comes to chaos engineering? How did that movement start, and where are we? Where are we today? You, you see, Kunal, open source as a practice itself came a long time ago, and and it's been building. I mean, people saw the future that open source is is going to be powerful. open source is is the key to development open source not just from a business perspective but from a development perspective itself people saw the potential in open source and the open source culture came from the netflix days itself where netflix donated chaos monkey as an open source project and chaos monkey started off the chaos engineering movement let's be honest here and chaos monkey was uh, nothing but a, a project meant to you know randomly shut down vms terminate instances and that was that became an open source project and it's some folks are still using it and and that's that's the point of being open source that you can still contribute you, there's no there there's no end to contribution and anyone can take it up i i don't believe that open source projects die but if it would have been closed source then netflix hmm. would have you know stopped just yeah. contributing to it and it would have been to them but netflix ensured that by open sourcing chaos monkey they will start the chaos engineering movement and and since then this after chaos monkey came into play there was the simian army which which wasn't just an open source project which, but it was a collection of open source projects it was various cloud testing tools which which again netflix formed it, it involved latency monkey security monkey and the other few projects which which actually ensured that we are just not focusing on chaos but we are also focusing on various aspects of chaos engineering that is latency security performance mm -hmm. health checks uh, we we wanted to check out conformity so that's that's the beginning of the open source journey and then what started off was making chaos engineering a business basically netflix did not make it a business it opened it for the community but then came folks who who started making chaos engineering a business let's say reliably or kremlin or all these folks but but the ev eventual scenario turned out to boom when when the cncf ecosystem came into reality when when cncf became a powerhouse when when people realized what kubernetes has done and open source is the future around 2016 and then started the open source chaos engineering movement basically i mean there was there was cube monkey after chaos monkey they formed cube monkey where they were not they were terminating random instances in kubernetes and then i mean we started off with projects like litmus chaos it 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 was actually written for for another project it was an open source project that was written for another project that will curate chaos for some other project in in the community and then we thought that open source is so powerful we have just we we donated it as an open source project and we realized that open source is so powerful that people are actually contributing to it it's not just us who are using it that there are there is usage from from the outside and people have started creating issues as well and and that is where you know we realized that open source is powerful and open source chaos engineering took off there came out projects like chaos toolkit chaos mesh uh chaos blade and the other projects that are out there there's even an open source project in cube invaders where chaos engineering is induced as a game you you are actually playing a game but you are also running chaos on your system in a gamified way that's mm. that that's what chaos engineering the open source chaos engineering movement did and if if you just check out all the open source projects out there today the scenario has developed in such a way that i'll be honest with you people are moving on to the open source side of things people even if they want to purchase a product 
they they are like we want to check out the open source project first alternatives hmm. uh, yeah we are, we are checking hmm. out the open source project and then moving ahead with it so hmm. so that's 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 been the the power of this open source chaos community as of now and it's it's seen massive yeah. traction to be honest yeah and, uh, by the way congrats on being cncf incubated um great work thanks, thanks, uh, on that thanks, but uh, but but yeah i mean we'll talk more about litmus chaos of, after uh, after a while and how you can get started and by the way all the things with we and uh, lenjan are mentioning i'll leave the links in the description below but for a particular organization uh, if they want to get started with chaos engineering right they haven't like uh, adopted the practices beforehand or whatever they it's like, it's like they're new new what should be the first step see the first step is always tough i'll i'll tell you uh, chaos engineering is something that's that has had a lot of roadblocks to be honest because people have been skeptical they they don't have the resources in place they don't have the money to invest or they believe that it's it's too too hard too dangerous we don't have the learnings so i think the first and foremost important thing is understand that this is necessary for you understanding it from the resources that are out there reading more and more docs that that have been put out there because it's it's still a new practice i mean everyone wants to adopt it it's into adoption but a lot of people don't know about chaos yet that's that's the that's the issue they 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 might go out run some open source projects get some idea but but still the the eventual step is to get the idea understand why is it important for your systems understand the why is answer answer your own questions what are the possible outages that you have faced over the years what what can you learn from the outages that have happened in real and and then start with this practice and the initial practice is not just to go on and run the experiments the chaos experiments but but research i think i'll i'll give you an example there's this huge giant uh, sports apparel giant i i won't name them they are running chaos engineering today and they started off with research they did not do anything for the for the first 6 months they did not run any chaos they just did the research on what exactly is chaos engineering where do we need it what are the possible outages that can happen to us what we can learn from the industry from the e-commerce industry or from from you know from any sort of industry that 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 we correlate to and then they started bringing it as a practice so so the first practice they brought in was listed down the tools they listed down what are the pros and cons what what will help us what do we need out of these tools and then they started running a proof of concept on on all the tools okay. yeah that, that 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 that's it uh, i mean they they ran a proof of concept they listed down the tools and eventually just listed down what are the differences between all these tools and then they proceeded with running game days which once you start running a game day a chaos game day then you you are already in it so so that's 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 how you start amazing well thanks for sharing prithvi um I, i have one you know one question it may be a little bit naive how is chaos engineering um different than testing or is it like a part of it okay so there sometimes we hear people say chaos testing while some are saying engineering at this stage we don't really want to create the immediate differentiator that what's really chaos testing or like what's really chaos engineering we usually take it under the same umbrella but essentially they are different while we are testing things we have a clear objective we are saying that okay i have this hypothesis that uh, when i'll put these value let's say x value within this function i should get this result and the outcome is binary either our test pass or our test fail it's as simple as that while we are chaos engineering it's much bigger than that while do we do have a hypothesis here as well we are not just being limited to any binary outcome we are going towards an observability approach a uh, probe approach that basically let us takes to validate a certain set of chaos uh, behavior that we are expecting the steady state behavior what we call the steady state behavior is essentially the real world outcome that we are looking for and this real world outcome is often a mess in our testing 
we don't really care for those minute metrics, those real world conditions that we want to target while we are doing testing, because usually the tests are made out of synthetic values that we are using just for testing. But here we do have game days, for example, what Prithvi was talking about earlier. We are having on uh, developer teams who are continually monitoring through when the chaos is going on through observability dashboards, through different uh, metrics that they want for their real real world applications. And it is essentially about measuring the impact that we are creating. So that's how chaos engineering is different. You're building a whole new approach, a whole new culture of bringing resiliency in. And that starts from right from the stage where you're developing your application to where you're, produ you're deploying it to the production. Yeah, I love the point you mentioned that it starts from the stage because I was about to ask at what point in the life cycle do you introduce it? So uh, we mentioned about monitoring observability and resiliency and all these other things. So when we talk about chaos engineering, it's like you're building trust. It's You mentioned it's not like a binary thing. Um, you're deliberately being like, okay, these are the possible scenarios for like production systems to fail. But that blast radius uh, for testing or or engineering how do you define that, the scope okay. of it? So when we speak about blast radius, it's sometimes uh, very, I would say, new to people because it sounds like uh, something dangerous, maybe, like blast radius, okay, what can go wrong? People are getting intimidated because of it. However, simply speaking, blast radius for the uninitiated, it's simply speaking that what can chaos engineering probably affect? For the uninitiated, people uh, who are new to chaos engineering, what we have seen doing them is they usually have some kind of a staging environment where they are most comfortable doing chaos with. And we they define automated conditions where the outcome of chaos engineering tests determine whether the application will go into production or not. However, we have taken a stance and the evangelism of promoting chaos engineering within the developers itself. That is, we advise people to bring in the chaos culture right from the moment that they are starting to develop their application. The reason is very simple because you cannot leave resiliency as an afterthought while your application is being developed. You need to integrate that culture, your, that mindset right from the beginning. So that includes checking our application for any potential network causes that might break it, for any load, uh, for example, if you are giving some CPU load and if it is breaking, then it's not good. We need to mitigate that right from the beginning within its architecture, within that philosophy. So that's something where we are advising people to do start right from the develop, uh, development stage, go till where you're comfortable while uh, experimenting within the uh, staging environment. And finally, do uh, game days, automated game days in production, where your developers can have a clear outlook on the observability profiles that you have. You can monitor the chaos while it's going on in production and start slow, start small, but go big. That's the motto. Amazing. Uh, so you scale from the initial it's, it's in itself. But thanks for sharing, Nilanjan, and so answering the questions. Um, amazing. Uh, all right. So uh, let's talk about Litmus Chaos. Maybe you can give us an intro and uh, share about the Litmus Chaos community. And um, yeah, basically that. <laughs> sure. Prithvi, would you like to take a go? Uh, sure, Nilanjan. I think you can add to the definition of litmus according according to yourself as well, and then I'll talk about the community. But uh, litmus is, as I, as I talked about uh, initially as well, it's a CNCF incubating project. It's it's a tool to induce chaos in, into your systems in a, in a controlled way. It's an open source tool. It's it's I mean, it's got an amazing community. We'll be talking about that, but. Uh, Litmus started off as a project to test open EBS. It's another CNCF sandbox tool based on cloud native data. And it started off with few initial experiments and was Kubernetes native initially. It, it was just meant to induce chaos into Kubernetes systems. There was there were Kubernetes native experiments, pod delete, pod CPU kill, node CPU hog, all these experiments. And then we slowly moved on to attack other instances, let's say VMs, I mean, your, your cloud, AWS, GCP, uh, Azure. So, so the idea was to create a complete chaos engineering tool and run chaos engineering in, in a dynamic way where, where uh, chaos is, is just 
not a practice but more than that you can you can monitor where your systems are going down you can run custom health checks with probes you you are having multiple i mean functionalities available to you you can use gitops to to scale your system i think uh, gitops is is a very popular term these days and and it's being adopted by everyone i mean everyone is is a large term but gitops is something which is being adopted by the mass so so we thought that we we need to differentiate litmus with other projects that are out there we created a chaos hub litmus as a chaos hub which which is basically an open marketplace you can you can run or pull in the predefined experiments that were written by the community the community have contributed experiments there and there's a, there's a pool of 58 plus experiments that are available on the chaos hub so that you can not just run kubernetes based chaos experiments there there's kafka cassandra and the other experiments as i talked about and and it has a, an amazing web ui we are not having a demo session but if you just check out litmus chaos you you'll see uh, what what exactly is out there and and that's 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 what the project is i'll allow nilanjan to just explain some some functionalities some features or, or some some aspects of litmus and then we can talk about yeah just, yeah just just quick quick thing before that um yeah funny mention about gitops being popular I'm wearing an argo ct shirt right now but <laughs> uh what we actually mentioned we have we've we have actually done a demo session uh a day before on litmus chaos is like an hour long video i'll leave that in the description below and also uh, yeah i'll leave the documentations and everything that uh, prithvi mentioned also in the description below go ahead nilanjan sure thing thanks prithvi so as prithvi already explained litmus chaos is a very hot very popular project right now you can see for yourself it's a cncf incubating project but i'm here also to talk about what it means to you as an end user or what it means for the developers or the organizations that are wanting to adopt the litmus chaos the litmus chaos was founded with a philosophy that we need to make our softwares more resilient and with the world now approaching and embracing kubernetes at such a rapid scale we are more than ever in need of litmus chaos or tools that can perform chaos engineering at large speaking of litmus chaos itself it was envisioned as an end to end chaos engineering tool that is everything that you need when you want to do chaos engineering starting from chaos hypothesis formation chaos hypothesis validation using probes automation of chaos and then observability of chaos using your observability tools and then monitoring the events in a cloud native way all this is part of uh, of litmus chaos and the major advantage that you get with uh, with uh, litmus chaos is that it's kubernetes native it's completely made out as a kubernetes uh, application itself you have different micro services residing pods deployments so on and so forth which are actually deploying the entire architecture the orchestration of chaos is also a kubernetes oriented approach and this in turn allows us to integrate well with other uh, projects that are under the cncf for example the shirt that you're wearing kunal it's argo right so we also use argo controller within the kubernetes if you would have seen the litmus 2.2 heavily uses the argo controller uh, workflow controllers to orchestrate the entire chaos process then we also use the gitops part we have event trackers which is completely an automated uh, way of injecting the chaos so it overall it derives this entire essence of being kubernetes native and performing Kub uh, kubernetes chaos engineering at scale and that's what defined uh, litmus chaos so yeah in sync with that i will just quickly mention a few of these uh, hot topics that make litmus chaos what it is right now first of all with the introduction of 2.0 you get your chaos workflow editor it's a nice ui where you can completely declaratively define the chaos intent that is you can basically go ahead and uh, with a few, few simple clicks you can basically define what you want to do as part of the chaos uh, you have your chaos agents which are practically the uh, agents that you can use for injecting chaos within other kubernetes cluster so you will have a single control plane and you can inject chaos into multiple kubernetes clusters which is essential for bringing all your different cloud components together under the chaos then you also have the support for monitoring and observability you can create interleaved dashboards within litmus chaos basically to observe the chaos 
and you also have the option for GitOps, as Prithvi mentioned. So it's an excellently nice way to basically keep all your or chaos workflow resources within the Git, and we use definitely Git as a DB, Git as a database, so that all the changes that you make to these uh, workflow resources within the GitHub itself can basically get synced, and you can run these uh, workflows on change or basically on any condition that you define, which you can also do with event tracker policies. Lastly, you have support for all the different container runtimes, such as Cryo, Container T, and Docker, of course. Lastly, but not the least, we also offer the Chaos Hub. So Chaos Hub in itself, it's an open source marketplace for all these different Chaos experiments that we have for Litmus Chaos. But more than that, let's say you want to have your own private Chaos Hub where you want to store the experiments that only your organization needs, you can definitely do that. And that's where the power of open source comes in. Every feature that you want to make change and you want to tweak or you want to see it maybe in the next release, you can just come and make requests for those changes. Or even better, you can basically fork it, add those features, and then raise a pull request so that the entire community gets benefited from it. So yeah, that's basically at large what Litmus Chaos is and how it makes the lives of all chaos engineering practitioners easy. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing about the, the features and, and everything, Nilanjan. Quickly, can you also update us what's on the future roadmap? And um, since we're all you know, right about time over here as well, maybe you can also share a little bit more about how folks can get started with contributing to the project. Sure, I'll definitely go ahead with the roadmap. So definitely we are looking forward to creating more non-Kubernetes uh, chaos experiments. The idea is when Litmus Chaos started, it was envisioned as a Kubernetes native tool for Kubernetes only, but right now we are much more than that. We already support chaos against AWS, GCP, VMware, even bare metal nodes, so on and so forth. So yeah, with this motto, we are trying to make Litmus Chaos as a principal chaos engineering tool, which will be sufficient for all the different types of chaos experiments that you want to perform. So that's bringing Kubernetes, non-Kubernetes, together under the same umbrella as part of a single chaos workflow if you want to do so. So yeah, that would be there. Then we are also looking forward to creating more application specific uh, chaos experiments. This include chaos experiment tailored to target, let's say, some C++ applications or Java applications or Python applications, which can directly go to the system call level and essentially target those applications in a fundamental way. And then we are also looking forward to improving the chaos SDK for creating more user defined uh, experiments. So Chaos SDK for Uninitiated, it's a simple tool that you can use to bootstrap new Chaos experiments. Let's say you want to write your own Chaos experiment, you can use the Chaos SDK to basically create that. So we are definitely looking forward to making it more simpler for the users. And of course, we had right now have support for Ansible, Python, and Go. We'll be definitely trying to bring more features to these. And yeah, lastly, uh, we are also looking forward to additional probe types. So again, for the uninitiated, the litmus probes are a way to automate the process of hypothesis validation using during the chaos. So it, how it works is basically we define a condition that we want to be valid throughout the chaos injection duration. So we just check in an automated fashion whether the condition remains true or not. Currently, we can do that for HTTP uh, conditions or for CMD probes or for Prometheus probes conditions or for KTS probe conditions. But yeah, we'll, we are definitely looking forward to bringing more observability tools such as Datadog uh, and more uh, features basically to create these probes work. So yeah, that's in brief what we have in the future roadmap for us. And, and talking about the contributions, lastly, to just, just conclude, I mean, we talk, uh, to, to give an outlook of the community, there's, I mean, already 1400 around folks on Slack. So you can join the Slack community. That's the litmus channel on the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, and uh, then obviously we are having the GitHub. You, you can just check the GitHub. Kunal will be posting the link as well to the GitHub. So if you check out the GitHub, there are some open issues already, good first issues as well. And we, we invite you to the community. You can you can start off creating your own issues or you can join the Slack. There's a Litmus Dev channel as well where people talk about their contributions. If you just join the Litmus channel and seek help, there's, there's an amazing community, not just me and Nilanjan, but there are many more folks from the community, the maintainers, the core contributors, the, the folks from the community. They'll help you contribute. They'll help you get started with 
uh, ample resources you can get started with the the videos that are out there on on youtube or the blogs that are already written on litmus chaos and once you just get an idea we we have uh, i mean contributions on on everything you can contribute not just tech uh, i mean technical contributions but non code contributions as well in terms of you know uh, changing the readme or or making the website better or blogs videos anything and then obviously code contributions on on charts experiments we welcome experiments i think if you contribute an experiment then from the litmus chaos project itself i i will ensure that you receive a swag pack for sure and uh, then other than that uh, there there are contributions on the monitoring side on on anything the ui side of things so there there's a lot to contribute to basically so just to get started join the litmus channel on the kubernetes slack and you can get started amazing well lots of an ample amount of resources for you to get started with i'll leave all the links in the description below thanks again for joining prithvi and nilanjan i'm looking forward to you know we're looking forward to all of your contributions Just get involved in the community if you get stuck you know folks will help you out uh, follow the code of conduct best practices and um, yeah uh, looking forward to seeing you there and thanks again for joining prithvi and nilanjan it was amazing talking to you uh, see you in the next one great day bye absolutely thanks man. thanks